He told the Muslims in Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan, that the problem in the Middle East and the hatred and the warfare is because of Israel. Now, he himself is a Jew, Bernie Sanders. Think about that. The worst anti-Semitic people are actually Jews. You know, um, Jews in Hollywood. Um, what is one of the Hollywood producers? I forget this name. Steven Spielberg. Yeah, he's pretty, he's not as outraged. Um, uh, I forget his name. I'll come, it'll come back to me. Some of these Jewish producers are, um, why is, why is, I can't remember his last name. It'll come up to me. Um, are one of the worst. They're anti-Israel, anti-Jew, anti uh, the promised land. Uh, they're only Jew by name is what they said. But um, boy, if this guy sniffs the White House, um, totally anti-Semitic, totally anti-Israel, uh, his cabinet is totally anti-Israel, even though he says he's a Jew. He says he's not a practicing Jew. I didn't know you had to practice to be a Jew, but um, somehow that makes sense. Uh, practice to be that. Um, but he says he has faith. He's a man of faith, he told uh, um, Anderson Cooper. He's a man of faith, but he is not religious. And he, um, he's not a practicing Jew. And Israel's the problem. And he's going to tax us 90%, his goal. So uh, more on Israel. The Methodist church continues to nail the coffins on their own, their own nails and their own coffin, I should say. Uh, they are uh, uniting with the Presbyterian Church of America, the United, there goes my water, the United Church of Christ, the United Church of Canada, all who pass resolutions to boycott the state of Israel. So you have professing believers, professing Christians who are saying, um, you know what, we like the Jewish Bible, we like the Jewish apostles, we like the Jewishness of Jesus, but we don't like the Jews. That's basically what they're saying. Does it make any sense? It won't. Because you can make sense out of nonsense. One famous theologian said, she was a friend of mine, can make sense out of nonsense. It's about as right as you can get. Um, but the Methodist Church, uh, just read about John Wesley. He loved the Jewish people. He loved God's redemption to Israel. He is rolling in his graveside in England of what they've done to the Methodist Church. But it's not just that. It usually follows along with other terrible doctrines like denial of the resurrection, denial of the fallibility of Scripture, and, of course, um, acceptance of homosexuality, which the Methodist Church have done for quite a long time already. What a shame. Another nail in the coffin. But let's continue. We've got to go this, through this quickly. Um, this is encouraging. A rise of Christians in Iran, even though it continues to be largely underground, the movement is growing, so much so the Iranian supreme leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, said that there is a threat to the Islamic faith by these house churches in Iran. Now, for him to say that, uh, he said it multiple times, 2010, now, um, these house churches threaten Islamic faith and for young Muslims because the people that are turning to Christ are young Iranians. They're the young ones who are coming to Bible studies, who are giving Bibles in, in their, uh, is it Farsi? Is that what the, 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 yeah, I think it's Farsi, in their native language. Uh, even though it is penalty, even though it's still jail time, even though it's still uh, very violent against Christians, it is growing. It is growing, it is growing, it is growing. The young want the New Testament. They want to hear the word of God. Um, by the grace of God, there are um, Arab um, from other countries, but there are satellite going into Iran with messages in Farsi, and uh, they're picking it up on shortwave radio, picking it up on whatever, however they can. It's growing. Uh, it's what Paul says, you can put me in prison, but the word of God cannot be in prison, Paul said. And it's happening right as we speak. Now, another issue is Italy. It's collapsing. Now, we've been talking about the European collapse quite a while. It's like sort of watching the Tower of Pisa just sort of lean and lean and lean, and it happens slowly. But the problem with this is Greece is 44% smaller than Italy. Italy's got a very large economy. If it folds the way they're thinking it's falling and folding, 
they will not be able to recover this. This will be a very difficult one to recover because um, it's basically, they have declined 28% since the beginning of this year on their economy. And one of the biggest Italian banks is actually thinking of shutting down and um, it's gonna plunge them into financial crisis unless the European Union bails them out again and Germany's already having issues. France is already having issues. So um, this was another news that came out today. Um, the adoptive, uh, the lesbian adopted Supreme Court decision, can uh, this mother adopt their children even though it's in an uh, a lesbian relationship? Uh, the ruling was 6-2 to reinforce gay rights uh, a year after the legalization of the same-sex marriage across the country. Um, the justices didn't hear the arguments in the case. Instead, they summarized in reversing the Alabama Supreme Court decision. Yet another statement of our courts, of our government, heading down the road of more and more the, the, the ruling of the um, not just laws, but the actual justice cases are actually, the courts are actually imposing their will upon God's people. That, that's really what you see today. And that's what Jesus said it would happen. Matthew 24, it'll be when they'll bring you to the courts. They'll bring you to courts to give an answer uh, regarding, the, regarding Christ. Who, you, who do you believe? It will be the courts will be enforcing um, that question and answer from believers in the last days, uh, Jesus said. Now, uh, this was an interesting one. Israeli strategic position has improved as they believe a war may be coming at the end of this year with either Hezbollah or Hamas, but they have been able, through all these chaos in the Middle East with uh, ISIS and Turkey and Syria, Israel has repositioned itself and gather enough strength that they believe that if a war were to happen, they will be able to stand stronger, uh, but they believe the war may come from the north or from the south, they're able to stand stronger um, but more on that in a moment, because as soon as they come out with that statement that, hey, our systems, our military power seems to be strong, ready for war, if it happens, something else came out today. Um, we'll talk about it at the end. Um, Russia, through the, uh, basically the warships uh, and naval assets went through the Bosporus Strait, which makes Turkey very, very concerned because they're not only, how do I put it? They're not only on the western side of Turkey, but now they're on the eastern side of Turkey as well. Uh, I'm sorry, on the eastern side, now they're on the western side to the Bosporus. So it's that strait that goes right through Turkey, Russian and naval assets, warships, and they even fired a warning shot to the Turkish uh, um, Navy. So things in that area are very, very heavy right now, very, very tense as Russia continues to flex its muscles upon the Middle East to bring some kind of climax at some point. Um, nothing has happened yet. Remember what I told you? I said, Jesus has the seals. You know, we're not going to panic about it's not going to blow up tomorrow. It'll happen when Jesus says it'll happen. And it's been sort of at a standstill, but Russia keeps aggressively moving toward uh, confrontation, which um, we don't want it to happen. It's not something that Christians desire to happen, but we know that it's something inevitable, according to the Old Testament prophets, there will be conflict in the Middle East, and Israel will be right in the middle. And uh, speaking of that, um, our lovely president uh, has reported that he is going to divide Jerusalem, and he's going to use UN Security Council before his presidency ends, which is only in about 10 months, less than 10 months now. Um, he's considering an unprecedented move to implement a two-state solution. And the president is looking to initiate a final negotiating settlement between Israel and Palestine using this National Security Council's, the United Nations Security Council resolution, a step that would obligate not only Israel and the Palestinian Authority, but would effectively determine the direction of U.S. policy for the next president to come. Whether it be Hillary, whether it be Trump, whether it be Sanders, whether it be anybody else, they're going to have to deal with this, and he is going to leave a mess. Just read Joel chapter 2 and 3. Read the whole book of Joel, but especially chapter 3, where it says that God comes into judgment against those who divide his land. Literally, God says, those who divide my land, he will come in direct judgment against them. 
Zechariah chapter 12, God has laid a burdensome stone, a heavy stone upon all nations to try to heave it away. It's Israel, a burdensome stone. If anybody tries to mess with it and deal with God's plan, it's that they will, severely, they will be severely injured by it. Think of all the presidents who have tried to deal with it. This, this could be Obama's final uh, swan song. All the presidents that have tried to deal with it have completely collapsed, whether it was Carter, Nixon, Reagan. I mean, Nixon, and then you had the Watergate issue, right? Remember Reagan? You had the Iran-Contra issue. Jimmy Carter, the, the, the economy collapsed right in front of him with the Iran controversy. Clinton, Monica Scandal. Bush, uh, Katrina, and uh, uh, the, 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 yeah. Uh, no, but after that, um, Katrina and then the financial collapse. Obama's pretty been, got a lot of issues, but he's kind of been Teflon. Nothing's really stuck with him. If he tries to make with the mess with Jerusalem, I don't think God's going to be too kind with that one. Every president has tried to deal with that, has had some kind of issue. I just gave you the rundown since 1974. Um, Ford didn't have a lot to do with it, but every president has tried to heave it away, try to deal with it, have come to some major, major problems. So if he's going to force a security council upon Israel to divide Jerusalem, it's going to happen within the next 10 months. We don't know. He certainly has aspirations to be the UN Security Council chief, which will be an interesting thing if, this, if Hillary wins. Tit for tat. I'll get you in here, you get me in there. It'll be interesting to see. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. We ask for your spirit to lead us, not to be overcome with uh, uh, the things of the end and eschatology that we become fearful but Lord, knowing that you have a, an aim, an end to all this, that is the return of your son. That is the return of Jesus and the resurrection. Lord, we look ahead in glory and power. And Lord, we don't become frightened of these things, but no, realize that you have an aim, that you have a plan. And Lord, we fit in your plan. This is a book about you and your glorious return. And we play a role. We have a subheading in this book and that we play a role in the last days of what you want to do. Use us, Lord. We ask you in humility and in eagerness. Use us, Lord, however you see fit. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.